coming in on a wing and a prayer. Though there's one more gone, we can still carry on. Coming in on a wing and a prayer. What a show, what a fight. Yes, we really hit our target for tonight. And we limp as we sing through the air. Look below, there's our field over there. With our full crew aboard and our trust. In the Lord, we're coming in on a wing and a prayer. Lieutenant Harold Vigu and Corporal Raymond Deru met with the rest of their crew at Edwards Air Base in California en route to the Pacific. Deru was from Detroit, Michigan. Vigu was from Waterville, Maine. Well, first we landed at Johnstown, then we went to the Quartum, ended up in Guam. That's where I was. Uh... Take it, Ralph. It's that good old Jones Beachhead. did you fly out of here? Do you remember? Two. Two? Yeah. One, the mission, mission was to truck, the you know, Japanese uh, naval base. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had a lot, a lot of flak, but nothing there came close to us. The second mission was to mark the island. Mm -hmm. That was the other one. <laughs> On May the 8th, in about 10 o'clock, uh, over the radio uh, came the news the war ended in, oh in, in uh, Europe. So, man, everybody's happy, really happy. So, at 12 noon, we arrived at the target on the nearest strip. That's about all I could see. It looked like about this big from 10,000 feet. <laughs> it looked very big. We were the last plane to go with the target because we had a special camera. It mounted in the floor as a K-28 and another guy just to man the camera. Just after we dropped the bombs, a shell went right through the number four engine, and put a hole right through the right through the missile like that. Never exploded. Just kept going. Well, the plane, you know, it, it, he lost a little control. He probably brought it under control about 3,000 feet, and he had the first thing I told him is we're losing fuel. It was just pouring out of the wing. I mean, he must have hit a gas line. So it just come pouring out of the wing, and the first thing the engineer and myself had to do was get the gas transferred as fast as we could out of that tank. And well, the pilot ordered us to jettison everything that we could. We took, we dropped the ball, to, threw all the guns out, barrels, I mean, the barrels. I threw nine 45 automatics right out the window. <laughs> and uh, we actually, we even threw the artillery power unit out, you know, the, generated it starts all in, we threw yeah. that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that was you know, we could we threw out. So he actually stayed between three thousand and maybe at fifteen hundred feet. And he was flying that thing cost control. I mean he, he was a hell of a pilot. And the pilot that was shot down with had thirty eight missions. He was ready to go home. The uh, commander uh, flew alongside us for a while but of course it was so slow, you know, we were a little slower than what he did and he called um, Guam for Dumbo, you know, the PBY that comes out and okay. drops those ramps and then hit us up. He f flew as close as he could get to Saipan and when he found out he was not going to make it, you know, to get ready, put the ditching belt, we had those ditching belts. And uh, what happened, he lost all his power, all oh the engines God. stopped at once. Oh my gosh. And your heart jumps right up in your throat, yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> and I think it took about a minute for me. Not, not, not more From 3,000 No, we were about 1,500 here. Did you ditch this airplane at night? This was a nighttime? Just at, just at dusk. When just it was at getting, dusk. Just, yeah. okay. 
You know, I would, are you a pilot? Of, uh, yes, I am. I often wondered what uh, the airspeed was when you hit the water. Well, it's interesting you asked that because uh, there was a t uh, some movies we had at the Yankee Air Museum, World War II movies, and uh, uh, they recommended you not ditch the B-24. They'd done all kinds of drills on ditching the B-24, and the B-24 was held together in the bottom by that strip that ran from the right. front to the back by the bomb bays, and the bomb bays were corrugated doors. Right. And normally the airplane would split right there into two halves. Well, because what the B-24 hit the water, and those bomb bays would collapse, and they were big scoops, and the deacceleration forces in the B-24 were well in excess of what they would be in the B-17 or the other airplanes, and they recommended you bail out. It's floated for a long time. In fact, I never did see it sink. Oh, yeah. well, because it, was, it got dark, see, yeah. I mean, but, it, but it stayed afloat because the tanks were empty. You know, there, there, was, uh, there, there, there was two other fellows got out, and I think it was the ball turret gunner and the camera guy. We heard people hollering, and uh, I saw the co-pilot standing on the wing. And then the next time I found him, he was floating dead. And he's, he was laying in the water like that. Mm -hmm. you know, he must have got hurt internally. I would say uh, myself and Lieutenant Vigo, he was in the, uh, the navigator. And, Three other guys. And not the pilot. The pilot oh, didn't survive right. that. I'll tell you, when you that plane hit the water, it's just like pulling a black shade down. You, you know, it's just like being, when I got knocked cold, right. you, know, you don't feel nothing. Lieutenant Harold Vigu was injured when the plane struck the water, but helped evacuate the crew and return twice to the sinking plane for personnel and life rafts. Suffering from his own injuries and exposure, Lieutenant Vigue supported badly injured crewmen until rescued the next morning. She was drifted away and probably drowned. Don't we don't know how bad they were hurt. It got dark and, and I'm pretty well hurt. I got a broken leg and I'm cut all the way in my ears half off. Oh and and uh, we're tied together. I took the, the belt off me and we tied ourselves together. And the, just after dark, I noticed this kind of luminous thing in the water and I made over toward it and it was a, the light frame. So I pulled a CO2 cylinder and it inflated upside down. <laughs> so we had one hell of a time here and then we can, I had one, my one shoulder was pretty well banged up and I only could use this arm. So we threw the belt over and finally he pulled himself up on the raft and then he got me up on the raft. Upside down. Oh, the gifts are going down. There probably was one in that raft. On but it was upside down. I think it was around 9, 10 o'clock, this PBY come flying over and he spotted us. We dropped a smoke bomb. And then I think about an hour later the story. Yeah, they, yeah, they gave me a couple of shots of or a shot of morphine. So they took the pain. I, I dozed in and out. I remember I remember In fact I never did see my my, my friend uh, Lieutenant Vigan never did see him until I got back to the United States. I don't know where this so I was in the hospital about a week and uh, on site and then they they flew me to Hawaii, Schofield Barracks. Uh, and then I was in the hospital for two months. Yeah, I, I was in the hospital. Two uh, two officers, I think they were colonels or, or a, a lieutenant colonel, came and they pinned a purple heart on me. And, and, uh, and I felt just about that big because all these other guys are real hurt, probably shot up more than I was. But but uh, that's what they did in the air car and they came over and put the medal on that ran. Lieutenant Harold Vigu received the Soldier's Medal for his actions near Saipan on May 8, 1945. This is the Army Hour with the 1st Allied Airborne Army. At that time, the Army was had a, a radio program that came on every Sunday. It's called the Army Hour. And they announced my name and the Lieutenant Vigna's name that they were shot down. But they didn't say where they were killed and that. My folks found out from somebody else, oh, no. and they wrote to New York to get this broadcast record. And when they got to it, they got it back, somebody played it, they didn't have the right needle, and they screwed up the record, they never did. <laughs> right after I got home, I, I made a trip to Maine, saw my, my friend, uh, Lieutenant Vigo, and I went to Illinois to see the tail gunners folks. I went to Chicago to see the nose gunners folks. Oh, they, they were overjoyed to hear, this. they wanted to know them. You know, I heard I got a lot of mail from the rest of the people. The co-pilot lived in Santa Barbara, California, and uh, they just couldn't believe that he was he was killed. And they, they were pretty well, they, were, they had 65,000 acres out there. They were pretty well off those guys. Oh they they were really yeah.
bad shape when they heard him. Well, I believe you have to defend your country. Just like the day we got shot down. I can't see why they t picked that target, which was a thousand miles the wrong way to Tokyo. And there was nothing there. There were no airplanes there, nothing, no, no Navy. And that, to me, it was a waste of, waste of people and, and equipment. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's war. Harold Vigu passed away in October of 2010 in Waterville, Maine. Raymond Deru lives today near Pinckney, Michigan. <laughs> I'm the walking pride of Uncle Sam. 